If I told my seven-year-old self he'd have a bunch of shiny Pokemon, he would not believe me. I didn't have the patience to find a shiny Pokemon when I was seven. What makes you think that I have a bunch now? Yeah. So we all know shiny Pokemon, right? If you're watching this video, you're most likely a Pokemon fan. And if you somehow don't know what a shiny Pokemon is, look it up. But you've read the title correctly. Is it true that shiny Pokemon are really more valuable in today's standards? Well, in Generation 2, shiny Pokemon had a 1 in 8,192 chance of being found in the wild. Nowadays, these odds are better than you finding a girlfriend. Well, Game Freak did a good job introducing shiny Pokemon via the Red Gyarados, a Gyarados that retained the color of a Magikarp. This was 90% of fans' first experience with a shiny Pokemon, most likely. Not me, though. This would not be the only time Game Freak would experiment with shiny Pokemon. In Pokemon Crystal, you had a 14% chance of hatching a shiny with the odd egg, an egg that contained every Pokemon except Togepi, up to that point with a chance to be shiny. While this was very appreciated, Game Freak didn't stop there. If you bred a male shiny Pokemon with a normal one, you would have a 1 in 128 chance of hatching a shiny Pokemon, which most people could do if you catch a male Red Gyarados. On paper, the odds sound amazing, but you have to remember it took roughly 10 minutes to hatch a single egg in Gen 2, so it was slower than most Masuda method hunts. There is a method that lets you get a shiny Ditto in breeding Pokemon, which gives you 1 to 1 64 odds, but I won't get into that that much. Generation 3, in my opinion, handled shiny Pokemon the best. Why? Well, there wasn't some orthodox method you could use to boost your odds. While well, Generation 2 did a great job introducing shiny Pokemon, Generation 3 gave us the reminder that shiny Pokemon are rare and you're gonna have to do some dedicated hunting to find one. Which is why so many full odds hunters hunt in these games. What makes it even better is that you couldn't transfer between Gens 2 and 3, so they really made shinies extremely rare in that case, while it being unintentional. If you do find a shiny Gyarados in a Gen 3 game, box it forever if you want any Gyarados to be valuable. In Generation 4, Game Freak would give us the Poke Radar, a function that lets you get rare Pokemon in the wild. However, it asks the secret function to find shinies. If you have a chain of 40, you had a 1 in 200 chance to find a shiny off of a shiny patch. Game Freak would also introduce the Masuda method, a breeding technique where two different language Pokemon would breed with the boosted shiny odds. In these games, it was a 1 in 1638 chance of hatching for one. Despite the methods existing, I would still say that shiny Pokemon still had value to them as the PokeRare method was difficult to pull off consistently and the Masuda method still had respectable odds. Before you comment about the cute charm glitch, it ain't really important to the video, so yeah. Generation 5 would arguably be the reintroduction of shiny Pokemon. Not only did they get mentioned in games as an NPC says the term shiny Pokemon, Game Freak would give you freebies again. In Black and White 2, if you have seen every Pokemon in your regional decks, you'd be able to go to the Nature Preserve and catch a shiny Haxorus. That's all though. If you complete the Black Tower in Black 2, you'd be gifted a shiny Gibble. While well, on White 2, you'd be gifted a shiny Dratini if you completed the White Tree Allo. These games would also introduce the Shiny Charm, an item that would triple your base shiny odds. You got this for capturing every non-mythical Pokemon in your national decks. Hell, if this even stacked with the Masuna method, which also got buffed in this game compared to Gen 4. This is where shiny Pokemon were starting to become more known to the casual audience of Pokemon fans. They were still relatively rare, but if you want in one, you have to go out of your way to still get one. Before I continue with this video, can you guys please subscribe? I plan on making more content that features my actual voice. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe as it's much appreciated if you do. Generation 6 would change our perception of shiny Pokemon forever. Double shiny odds, a multitude of methods, old methods returning, shinies were everywhere. 
finding a shiny Pokemon in a Gen 6 game was as common as finding a dollar on the street. Hell, this was the generation where I found my first shiny Pokemon. Obviously, the value of shinies were heavily deflated, but this was balanced by the hype they received. Pay attention to this as this is a key opponent to why shinies are more valuable despite them being more common. Everyone knows about Gen 6, so I'll stop it here. Generation 7 was the generation Game Freak gave us the shiny method for the players called SOS Hunting. Well, finding an underleveled green Salamence is impressive. That's not my main concern. In the Ultra games, we were given the Ultra Warp rights, where a group of Pokemon had the astonishing rate to be shiny at a mere 1 in 3 chance. This is where I started to think shiny Pokemon were really starting to lose their value without some sort of trade-off. This is where I feel like people also started to feel frustrated when encountering a shiny Pokemon. Or maybe that's just me. Generation 8 shiny hunting wasn't really anything to point out other than the Poke Raider returning in BDSP, which is even more difficult to pull off despite the boosted shiny rate. But these games would be nothing compared to Legends Arceus. This is where the market of shiny Pokemon will plummet to zero. If you have a perfect research level 10, mass outbreaks give you a 1 in 128 chance to find a shiny, and considering you find roughly 10 Pokemon in a single outbreak, those odds are increased to about a 13% chance to find a shiny. Massive mass outbreaks give you a 1 in 216 odds with the chance to find multiple of rare Pokemon like the Sui starters. If we compare this to the Ultra Sun and Moon games, you had a 1 in 3 chance to find a handful of Pokemon shiny. While in these games, it's lower odds, yeah, but you can find majority of the decks through this method which makes it ridiculous. It doesn't help that in Generation 9, it's also easy to find shiny Pokemon by eating a simple sandwich. What the hell? Inevitably, shiny Pokemon were going to be easier to find with overall spawns, but I've never expected anything like this to happen. What makes it worse is that Go even has more crazy shiny rates, and you can transfer them to the main series games. But you came here for the title. Why are shiny Pokemon more valuable than ever if you keep slandering them? Well, here's why. So I think Game Freak knew shinies for being more common, so they compensate by giving us ways our shinies are more unique. In Pokemon Home, there are marks Pokemon have that depend which generation or game they came from. Pokemon that were caught in the 3rd, 4th, or 5th generation don't have a mark, which if you find a markless shiny, people will know you found a shiny with one in 8192 odds. Sword and Shield introduced us to a multitude of marks, which gives Pokemon a special title when you send them out. And yes, even shiny Pokemon can have them. It's a rare sign to find a shiny Pokemon with a rare mark, which has a 1 in 1000 chance of happening. If you find a shiny Pokemon with a rare mark, it's basically 1 in a million odds to find one. That's not all Sword and Shield did, as they gave us an antique counterpart of Sinistee and Poltegeist, an alternate form which has a 1% chance of finding one in the wild. I've barely seen anyone with the shiny as it was so hard to obtain for the longest time up until the Crown Tundra DLC. BDSP gave us a legit shiny Arcus we hunt, which isn't affected by the shiny charm at all by the way. If you find one of these, it's a super rare shiny own. Legends Arcus gave us alpha Pokemon. Pokemon that were slightly more big and more intimidating than regular Pokemon. And yes, they too can also be shiny. You can either turn to these alpha Pokemon to Scarlet and Violet and they'll have the alpha Pokemon mark. Whenever that happens. Now we get to Gen 9. These games gave us the alternate forms again in family of three mousehold and three segments of Dunsparce. With the Dunsparce being the more sought after of the two as you can't find it in raids. And cause the shiny is really cool. If you do have a shiny star in these games, it's pretty sought after too, as most of them are in Apra Balls, which is a whole other thing I won't get into. You remember the shiny hype I was talking about earlier? Well, because shinies are so easy to get now, ironically, the hype has hit its peak since Gen 6, with new up-and-coming shiny hunters making shiny Pokemon even more valuable than they actually should be. Despite shiny Pokemon's value has decreased over the years, Game Freak has somehow found a way to make something that used to be so rare, even more rare.